So making your own custom folding size and die or bullet seating die can be pretty easy. It starts off with the PTG die blank and you can pick these things up from Midway USA for around 30 bucks. And in my opinion, it actually saves you some time and money going off with a pre-made die blank that's already pre-turned and knurled. Instead of buying your own bar stock or 4140 chromoly and making your own threads and knurling, 30 bucks I think to me is a pretty good buy. Well, big advantages for making your own die is for one, if you're in the Wildcat game um, and you can't find those reloading dies, well, you could turn it yourself. Another big advantage is the fact that you can actually make a better product than what you could buy on the market. So some might question why on earth would you make your own custom folding size and die when you could buy one from a reputable manufacturer such as Redding. Well, Redding does make some awesome products, I give it that, and no offense to them, uh, but that folding size and die may not be as concentric as you think. Now this is a Redding 6.5 Creedmoor body die. Now measuring on the inside diameter, I have this thing running as true as I possibly can. And you can see it's roughly at say two ten thousandths of run out. Now if I was to put the indicator on the outside of the die where it will actually screw into the press, you'll see that you actually have more run out than you think. Get this thing set up. Total run out on the outside of the die. You can see there, I'm looking at roughly three thousandths of run out. So with this three thousandths difference, I was getting at minimum three thousandths of run out when seeing the bullet. I couldn't figure out why until now. So ultimately, if you're looking for ultimate precision, um, this is the reason why you want to make your own custom die. Because you can actually control the concentricity and the overall product, um, which is a little bit more care. And uh, I'll show you guys how. So when you purchase these dies, you can buy them as unpiloted or piloted. A piloted blank will have a specific caliber bored out in the middle, which aids in guiding the reamer down the bore. Now I recommend getting the piloted, but for the dies that we're making today, I'll be using an unpiloted because it was out of stock. So I set up this die blank on my three jaw chuck with a total run out of one ten thousandths. Since this thing is unpiloted, I had to drill my own hole and then ream it out to 0 .242. Using high speed steel bits and cutting oil, it made quick work drilling all the way through. I then parted off the excess material. Now that little piece that broke off is actually really good to keep and make for thread protectors. After that, I faced off the top of the die and then cut off a little bit of the knurling to give it a more of an aesthetic look. So unfortunately my drill bit was about 20,000 short, so I countersunk the hole and drilled it all the way through. To make the sizing chamber, I'm using something called a sizing reamer. This one's made by Dave Manson and is chambered in 6x47 Lapua. So to get the total chamber depth, you first want to get the shell holder you plan on using. I highly recommend dedicating that shell holder for the die you're making. So first, get the depth of the shell holder, then add that number to the case head protrusion of your barrel. It's recommended to use a go gauge instead of a fired case. I'm just doing this for demonstration. Chambering the size and die is just like chambering a rifle barrel. I'm using the Bald Eagle free floating reamer holder and I ream about 150 thousandths per pass. Then as I get the chamber depth, I ream to 50 thousandths, then 20, then 10, 5, and obviously creep up to the measurement you need. Now the lock ring is another important factor that many might miss. The lock ring could actually make your die sit canted and off center. Now, I'm going to take a 1000s facing cut and show you guys how off this thing is. And as you can see here, I'm only getting 50% contact. So let's fix that. Yep, that's looking more gooder. So this 6x47 Lapua actually uses a 47000s decapping pin. So I'm going to make one out of a spare 308 decapping pin from Lee. So I often do this to make my own custom expander mandrels and we're going to turn this thing down to 0.241 for roughly two thousandths of neck tension. So the last thing to do is make the decapping pin holder. So since we're using the lead decapping pin, we're going to use a 3 8 drill bit and drill down about 640 thousandths. So using my homemade boring bar, this is a quarter inch boring bar, high speed steel that I profiled for inside threading. Now I threaded this thing for 20 TPI. Lee uses a 20 TPI NPT style nut, 
So as it's turned down, or as the nuts tighten, it will actually tighten against the actual mandrel. Another option would be just to get a 3 8 NPT tap. With all said and done, we now have a full length size and die which will give me best possible run out and it saved me some coin. I wasn't able to find this caliber without spending quite a bit of coin. As for the reamer, I picked it up on eBay for around 35 bucks, brand new. However, you could actually rent the reamer at places like 4drentals.com or other places or people in the forums. Well folks, thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this informational and helps you guys out. As always, you stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Thanks for watching.